All right, Hannah, so in the latest bit of television that was like a train wreck, you just can't look away. You have to watch the slow motion disaster. The one and only Republican Senator Ted Cruz went on ABC's The View to clash with all of the hosts on that very liberal talk show, and it was a, a true sight to behold. It was the kind of thing I knew I had to watch because just the drama, the clickbait, the tension. Um, I'm not particularly fans of The View or of Ted Cruz, but I could not look away from this one. <laughs> but you sent it to me, and I also enjoyed watching it. I have to say, I have never sat down and watched The View. I only ever see The View in this kind of capacity where it's a shorter clip, but it's about an eight minute clip. And I agree with you, the tea is spicy. I clicked it expecting to sort of side with the women because I think Ted Cruz is a weasel and I don't typically like him very much. But I gotta say, he actually did pretty well in this interview, all things considered. And he was fighting it from all sides. Like not even the Republican on the panel was with him. So I think we should break it apart. Let's move through a few different segments for folks because it's about eight minutes long. So we'll break it up, but we had a lot to say about it. First clip we've got here is they went back all the way to 2015-16, the presidential election primary when he was running against Trump, and they basically dug up the things Trump said about his wife and said, how could you ever support someone who said these kinds of things? Uh, here is the first clip that we've got. Take a listen. This is what you said about him back in 2016 during the campaign. Let's take a look. I'm going to tell you what I really think of Donald Trump. This man is a pathological liar. He doesn't know the difference between truth and lies. He lies practically every word that comes out of his mouth. The man is utterly amoral. It, morality does not exist for him. Yeah. So I have to ask you, because, you know, I'm, I'm married to a Cuban man. Mm -hmm. I frankly don't know how you get over your wife being called ugly. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you get over those kind of calumnies against your father. But you obviously <laughs> have gotten over it. Today you sing a very different tune. So tell us, were you lying then or are you lying now? Yeah, that's, that's a loaded question there. Mm -hmm. Look, it's an, it's an, I think a lot of people have the same yeah. question. It's a very different Ted Cruz that we're seeing. <laughs> we are. I mean, would you uh, not agree that that's very different Ted Cruz than, no, than I today's what Ted I, Cruz? What I would say is this. In 2016, we had a primary where Donald Trump and I beat the living crap out of each other. I'll tell you, Heidi laughed when he said that. My father laughed. By the way, my dad didn't just kill Kennedy. He's got Jimmy Hoffa buried in the backyard. <laughs> it was idiotic. And we went after each other, and at the end of the day, he won. And I had a decision to make in November of 2016. He'd been elected president, and I got a responsibility to represent 30 million Texans. I could have decided my feelings are hurt, I'm going to take the ball and go home and not do my job. But if I was prepared to do that, I better be prepared to resign from my job because I have a responsibility. So what I did is I, is I went and said, listen, we have an opportunity to make a difference for this country, and I want to roll up my sleeves and lead the fight to actually deliver on promises. We were talking a minute ago about the incredible booming economy. We saw 7 million people get off of food stamps. We saw poverty dropping. We saw African-American poverty. Poverty dropping. We saw Hispanic poverty dropping. Those are real results that make a real difference, and I'm proud of that record. And, and why did I choose to work with him, even though I was pissed off at what he said? Because I had a job to do, and I had a responsibility. So I actually, you know, I'm not a Ted Cruz fan, but I thought he responded pretty well to this. Um, there, I thought this was kind of very emotional from the host. They're like, but he said mean things years ago. And he kind of responded with, you know, I had to get over it. Politics is a messy business. I do think it's real rough to support somebody who insulted your wife. But what was he supposed to do? Throw a temper tantrum for four years? I mean, I he didn't have to endorse Trump as much as he did. But he had to get productive and work with him when he was president of the United States to enact policies, a lot of which I supported, like the tax cuts. Um, so I thought his answer was... You know, it's obviously an ugly moment for him, a tough one for him to answer to, but I thought his answer, all things considered, was pretty decent. Yeah, I thought if you were just watching this interview and you know nothing about Ted Cruz, I thought he did a really good job actually like showing some humor and sidestepping this and giving like what would be a pretty good political answer, right? I, he says, I had to answer to the people that elected me. I had to work to get things done and I had to get over it. And if it's, it's just politics is politics. He said some mean things about my wife and my father, but like they thought it was funny and we moved on. 
the reality is that he didn't just let it slide. He became kind of a sycophant for Trump. Like, yeah, he was basically he carried around his coattails for the next four years. And Ted, Ted Cruz has never gotten a single thing done in his life, right? This is the guy that will introduce a, bet, a bill called Ed, Audit the Fed, and he doesn't even show up to vote on his own bill. He's a grandstander. He says whatever he needs to stay in power. That's why I call him a weasel. He's somebody I used to like when he first got into office. I thought he was going to be a libertarian because that's what he professed for a little bit. That's the talking point he used when it was popular to use it. So and much now, for that. So much for that when it's not anymore. So I, you know, I, I think this is your typical Ted Cruz on display, but it played well. And I have to say, like, I do still find it one of the funniest moments of the Trump campaign when he accused Ted Cruz's dad of being like the person who killed JFK. It was just such yeah. an outrageous claim. And then like to call his wife ugly, like, I don't know. I, I That's just always going to be funny to me. I'm never going to not I, think it is. I, I, I agree with you, but I did think it was petty and kind of dumb that that was what the view host brought up. It's like, really? We're going back to 2015 for your first question. All the things in the world going on. It just yeah. felt a little petty and a little dumb. But what was even but, more pet? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, but I was going to say, have you ever heard anybody in the media ask him to his face? Like, the dude called your wife ugly and you just got over it and became his biggest fan. Like, that was a funny moment for me. I've never seen that happen before. I wonder if he has faced that question before. I don't know. Um, but the, the something even pettier and much objectively worse was that protesters interrupted and tried to stop the interview. The audience apparently wasn't very happy about them even having a conversation with somebody they disagreed with. So uh, take a listen to this little uh, clip from Entertainment Today about what went down. We have seen trillions and trillions of dollars spent by Joe Biden and the Democrats. Just last year, last year the federal government took in $4 trillion in tax revenues. Most money in history we've ever taken in. Yeah, and Whoopi, she wasn't standing for it. Ladies, ladies, excuse us. Let us do our job. Let us do our job. We hear what you have to say, but you got to go. So I don't know about you, but I think it's pretty pathetic if you can't even handle like an eight minute conversation with someone you don't like that you resort to interrupting and shouting down and trying to stop an event on your own show that you like. Like, I thought this was pretty pathetic, but I also thought the hosts, kudos to them, shut it down. Yeah. And they even apologized to him for it. Well, I like that they shut it down, but I'm also not very surprised that the audience on The View is not used to hearing contradicting no. views because as much as they try to be like, it's all different mindsets coming to the table, like it's not. They throw in like a symbolic Republican who usually gets beat up on by the other panelists or has to basically toe the Democratic kind of line and it's you don't get robust conversation or debate on this show at all. It really is meant to kind of just throw red meat to the left's audience. So that's probably why I've never actually sat down and watched it. I, I kind of know that. But I appreciate that they shut it down. And I think it's kind of interesting they were there shouting about climate change, of all things, at Ted Cruz. Like, I just, you know, we talked about this last week with the climate activists, but I'm just increasingly convinced they have no idea how to actually affect change on this, you know, all-pressing issue they think should get nonstop attention. It's like the things that they do just annoy people, turn them off, and don't really achieve anything. It's weird. Yeah, they just suck. But I thought the most interesting part of this interview was, so the View hosts are really obsessed with January 6th. And you and I both think the January 6th riot was bad. We both have been very clear that, that Trump did not have the election stolen from him. But they're like very obsessed with this topic. And so, of course, they brought it up time and time again to Ted Cruz. But he came with receipts and he called them out, not just for all the times that Democrats have denied elections, but all the times they've done it on The View. And he pointed out that Hillary Clinton, Stacey Abrams have both sat in these chairs on The View with no pushback and claimed that elections were stolen or illegitimate from them. Take a listen to this little back and forth that he had. I thought it was uh, a quite a good moment for Ted Cruz. There's a lot of folks in the media that any time... Hold on, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm answering exactly that question. Okay. There are a lot of folks in the media that try to, any time a Republican is in front of a TV camera, try to say the election was fair and square and legitimate. You know who y'all don't do that to? You don't do it to Hillary Clinton, who stood up and said Trump but stole the election. You don't try to kill my Stacey former Abrams, who said, boss. who said that the election was stolen. They sat here yes, and said it was illegitimate, right. and, and, it and was. you guys were fine with it. Okay, so, so, so it's illegitimate did, did when Republicans... Republicans win, but not when Democrats win. No, you know, here's the thing. We may not like when Republicans win, but we don't go and we don't storm. We don't try to change what... 
Did, did I miss an entire year of Antifa riots where cities across this country were Antifa burning and, and police cars well, were being yeah, firebombed? Yes, you did. Your position is the left doesn't engage in violence, really? No, they wanted to miss I'm our friend Mike Pence. Like, we how didn't do we do, make you sense just of accused that? us of doing something we didn't do. You said Hillary Clinton didn't say whatever she didn't say. I'm saying to you, listen. And she said we it's sitting say, here, and you we were fine come, with her saying it was illegitimate yes, for, for Republicans her it was. to win. She called so Donald Trump the next opinion. morning, and yeah. she conceded the election, Ted. Who okay. might took the Look. call? As did Stacey Abrams. All right. Sonny she, has she, a she sat there while, oh, while Donald Trump Hillary was Clinton getting sworn Hillary Clinton says in. Trump is an illegitimate Two president. Hillary Clinton right. says the yes. election is stolen from you. Hillary Clinton in 2002, George W. Bush was oh, selected, not elected. Paperwork. Joe Biden, <laughs> Al Gore was, was elected president. So Joe Biden... Yeah. Claims you just George said we w. don't Bush scream at each other, right? Or, do, or, or is it just you that gets to okay. scream? Okay, no, no, I agree. Okay, I... then lower your voice because okay. we are very close okay. to each but, other. But, but, but I... So what, what did you make uh, of this clip here? I love that he brought the heat because while, again, I think he's carried water for Trump and he definitely was part of the whole conspiracy that Trump tried to push that the election was stolen, he's not one bit wrong that this actually started with the left. They started doing this, especially in 2018 with Stacey Abrams and 2016 with Donald Trump versus Hillary. We saw this all over the place on the left. And then when the right gives it back, they now want to act like this is this massive day in history where all of a sudden democracy was under threat. It's like, no, you've been undermining elections for years let's be really clear and you've never gone back and recanted your candidates have never come up and cleared that out they try to say like oh well at least hillary and stacy called and you know gave their congratulations and admitted that they'd lost it's like okay but they still peddled that conspiracy to their voters and to the general public for years afterwards and they continue to do it now they continue to try to push the narrative that russia helped steal the election for trump you have hillary clinton out here just recently saying some of these things and i thought it was interesting they say uh when he pushes back on them and he says you know hillary continued to push that this was an illegitimate election they say for her it was which is like the equivalent of saying, well, that's her truth, right? Well, and for Donald like, no. Trump, his truth <laughs> was that it was ill. Now, he's wrong, but like, right. that's such stupid logic. Yes, it's very stupid logic. Um, and I like how once he really kept coming with the receipts, they immediately go to shut it down. Like, they immediately start being like, you're, you're speaking too loudly. Like, you're too close right now. Like, I don't want you to yell. We have to go to commercial. And it's like, okay, so you don't actually want to have a legitimate conversation about this topic. Like, you shouldn't have brought it up then. They really got exposed. And I love when, he w when she was like, well, we don't storm the Capitol. And he pointed out, well, okay, but 2020 was full of leftist riots where they literally burned cities. And I think 17 people died at the last count. Uh, and she and Whoopi Goldberg's like, I don't know what an Antifa riot is. And it's like, yes, Whoopi, because they don't happen in your multimillionaire gated mansion neighborhood. I'm sure like they are so out of touch. There's they're these super rich liberal celebrities. I'm sure that they're not aware of all these riots that did the most property damage on record in, in decades. Right. Like because well, it wasn't in their neighborhoods and their media barely covered it. But that doesn't make it any less real. That's what I was going to say is their media didn't cover it. And Whoopi is one of the oldest people on the left's media team. So, like, Whoopi, if you don't know what this is and you're not telling your audience what this is, that's your fault. That was your job to report on those things as much as you report on January 6th. And it's really freaking telling that you don't, right? It's really telling that you want to ignore all of these things that happen in your own backyard by people on your team. And then you want to scrutinize when it happens on the right. And to me, the whole thing is just so exhausting. This is why it is so excellent being outside of the two-party system and just a being able to actually be objective and informed and think for yourself and not just have this like blind bias to your side where you're able to live in this bubble where you convince yourself that the other side is just this huge threat and all evil and so bad and your team is so good and always does the right thing and it's you sound ridiculous i can't and i'm just Americans have got to get sick of this at some point, having even members of the media being this pigeonholed into their little bubbles. It's, it's, it's so stupid, and it makes everybody dumber for watching at the end of the day. Yeah, I thought it was really revealing, but I am glad they did it. They actually had someone different on. I don't know if they'll be doing it again anytime soon after getting kind of exposed, uh, to be honest with you. But it makes for really good TV and interesting content to discuss on the podcast. So thank you to The View and Ted Cruz for the clickbait content.